another purple trace. It's weird how these show up in bursts every other week. Well, let's see what the calamity is up to now. Revelio, where oh, am Dark I? Dark witch, what are you doing here? I honestly don't know, but I think I'll have a bit of fun while I'm here. This looks like a muggle neighborhood. Stop right there. And who's going to stop me? I am. Stupefy. Ah. Stupefy. Protego. Stupefy. Ah. Stupefy. Protego. Stupefy. Ah. Stupefy. Protego. Stupefy. Ah. Stupefy, Protego, Stupefy. Stupefy, Protego, Stupefy. Ugh. Oh, that did it. I vanquished the Dark Witch. Wow, I never expected to see her again after last year. She's gotten a lot stronger. She was even harder to overcome than the dragons brought on by the calamity. Well, at least there was only one of her. I don't need to worry about her again. It's not like I need to return a dozen or two dozen dark witch foundables. Can you just imagine how much spell energy that would take? Bonjour y'all, my name is Brita. And today on Wednesday night, I'm going over a few different things. As you might have guessed from the opening skit, I will be covering the information for the upcoming brilliant event, Darkness Rising Part 2, also known as Dark Witch Returns. At the end of this video, I'm also giving a little announcement about my channel and the direction that I am taking with it. So if you are interested sort of in the creative behind the scenes aspects of running a YouTube channel. Stay tuned for that. Quick details about the event. It will run from Tuesday, October 20th through Tuesday, October 27th, both starting and ending at 11 a.m. Pacific time, just like most brilliant events that we've had. There will be a free store pack. It will include all of the ingredients you need to brew a single tonic for trace detection, plus a few extra random ingredients thrown in and 25 spell energy. Of course, there's also the store packs that you can pay for. I will have a mathematical breakdown on Wizards Night Hub on whether or not they're a good value, but usually they're not. Also, a reminder just in general with the how port keys work, these will be 1.5 kilometer port keys and you need to pick them up during this week's event. So if you have any brilliant port keys left over from the first week, those will still give the week one rewards even if you open it during the second week. Also, with brilliant runestones, if you use a brilliant runestone, a darkness rising brilliant runestone, during this week, you will only get the week two reward if you get the bonus foundable. However, if you save your Darkness Rising runestones to use after the event is over, then you might get either the week one or the week two reward. First up, brilliant foundables and where to find them. Giant Stone Hands is available through Wizarding Challenges. As usual, you need three of those. Brilliant Borgen is available in Brilliant Port Keys. You need five of those. Of course, if you complete the entire bonus assignment, you will also get five of him as a completion reward. The Brilliant Ominous Mask is a task reward. Brilliant Dark Witch, what? Is an encounter on the map that you will need 20 of her. And the Brilliant Dark Wizard is also an encounter on the map and you will need 20 of him. Quickly, let's go over the tasks and rewards for the event. You can follow along on my screen with the infographic provided by Orange Wizard. Spoiler alert, 
these task rewards are a lot better than what we have seen recently. So shout out to the developers for listening to player feedback. All right, collect ingredients from portmanteaus two times from the map. Use two tonic for trace detection. Return 10 brilliant dark wizard. Uh, for doing all of that, you'll get 550 wizarding XP, 50 brilliant XP, two restricted section books, and 10 spell energy. Second set, return 20 foundables. That's 20 foundables, like any foundables, so pretty easy to do. Use master notes five times. Collect four brilliant darkness rising rune stones. So remember, you collect rune stones when you visit your brilliant registry page and you have gotten enough brilliant XP to level up. So the quickest way on that one is just to wait until you get to the second set of tasks before you ever visit your brilliant registry page and hopefully you'll rank up a few times and go ahead and catch those, uh, those brilliant rune stones quickly. The master notes will definitely be kind of the slowdown task here because you can't pre-brew your potions if you're doing the master notes multiple times. You can choose to do uh, like healing potions or regular stimul potions because those have a shorter brew time. You can double up by getting a runful cauldron. You can speed up your brewing by spending gold. A couple of different ways to do that one quickly. For completing all of that, you will get one giant stone hand. Yes, that is the reward that you get from doing wizarding challenges. You get one of them here for free. 750 wizarding XP, 75 brilliant family XP, three restricted section books, and 10 spell energy. Third set of tasks, earn 7,500 wizarding XP from wizarding challenges, defeat 15 foes in wizarding challenges, Return 15 Brilliant Dark Witch. So two of those tasks really stack on top of each other. If you put on a Barufio's Brain Elixir and do a bunch of wizarding challenges in like Tower Forest, you will easily get the wizarding XP that you need while defeating your 15 foes. So for doing all of that, you get a total of uh, 1,250 wizarding XP, 75 brilliant family XP, five restricted section books, and 10 spell energy. Fourth set of tasks, earn 7,500 wizarding XP from traces, place five images on the brilliant Borgen and Burke's registry page, collect 15 mysterious note pieces by returning brilliant darkness rising traces. So. 7,500 wizarding XP from traces, not that big of a deal. I have an entire video on grinding XP, so you can check that out in the card up above or the description down below. Really just has to do with being strategic with your Barufia's Brain Elixir and your Trace Charm. So yeah, do that. <laughs> Placing five images on your Brilliant Borgen and Berg's Registry page. Um, again, if you are ready to place brilliant images before you get to this part, just hold up and wait until you get to the fourth set of tasks to place them in your registry. That way you can do it more quickly. If you're having to place images multiple times, the wizarding challenges, you only need three of that to place it. So just do a bunch of wizarding challenges and you'll be fine. Mysterious note pieces. This is something we've seen before. It's kind of a weird task because basically it just means return 15 brilliant traces. And remember, since this is week two, we will see the brilliant poacher and the brilliant snatcher from week one. Those will count towards that task. For completing all of that, you will receive one brilliant ominous mask, five restricted section books, five defense against the dark arts books, 50 gold, and 30 spell energy. These are the only tasks that you have to complete in order to get all of the images you need for your brilliant registry. But of course there's a bonus assignment and just a reminder you don't have to complete the bonus assignment. I did not complete the bonus assignment during week one. It's okay to chillax a little bit and not do everything. 
I'm just throwing that out there. So, bonus tasks. Brew 10 potions. Return 45 brilliant darkness rising foundables. Use any 10 Estemulo potions in wizarding challenges. Yes, that is 10. Luckily, any of them count, so you'll just use up your regular ones, I guess. <laughs> Defeat your highest unlocked chamber one time. Unlock five portmanteaus. So this is a repeat of the pre previous bonus assignment, unlocking the five portmanteaus. Those can be any portmanteau, they don't have to be brilliant. So if you have five regular ones that you want to unlock during the bonus assignment, that will work as well. So for doing all of that, you get 2,000 Wizarding XP, 100 Brilliant Family XP, 5 additional Defense Against the Dark Arts books, 1 Achievement Badge, 5 Borgen, and 20 Spell Energy. So as mentioned before, if you complete the entire bonus assignment, you get the 5 Borgen Fragments. Otherwise, you need to pick up 5 Brilliant Porkies during the week so that you have enough to place in your registry. Since I didn't do the bonus assignment last time, I am actually still walking off my fourth and my fifth Brilliant Porky from the first week in order to place whatever brilliant image that was. And that's, that's an option for you for this week if you don't wanna do the bonus assignment. And as always, thank you Niantic and Warner Brothers for providing me with this information early so that I could create a video and also write an article on Wizards Unite Hub, which as always is linked down in the description below. Most of y'all know I've had an NDA with Warner Brothers and Niantic for well over a year now. Matt of the YouTube channel Animagus, who is also a staff writer on Wizards Unite Hub, received an NDA uh, like 10, 11 months ago. And recently, just in the last few weeks, some of our friends have also received an NDA with Niantic and Warner Brothers. So congratulations to Lynette of Wizard PhD, James of Expecto Go, and sorry German friend that I don't remember your real name, but Eric Knopps, he's a German YouTuber, German, German YouTuber. So if you speak German, you should check out his channel. Because of this, there are now a lot more videos covering Wizards Unite events. We all release the information at the same time according to when we are allowed to release the information. And I am honestly very happy for my friends to have this opportunity. It's been a great opportunity for me, a great opportunity for Matt, and so it speaks well for the overall Wizards Unite creator community to know that Warner Brothers and Niantic know about us. They are paying attention to what we say and they have extended this invitation to a few other content creators to receive information early but also provide player feedback directly to the team so that the developers can make an even better game for us. All of that said, and please, please, please believe me when I say that I am truly happy for my friends. They're my friends. Like, I haven't met Eric and Ups. Maybe if the world is ever normal again, I can go to Germany and we can hang out. But, like, Lynette and I text each other, okay? I've hung out with Lynette. I've hung out with James. You know, I, I watch their videos. I join their live streams. Like, these are my friends, and I'm really glad that they have this opportunity. All of them have more subscribers than I do. And because of that, now that we are all releasing event information at the same time, my views, uh, like play views, on my event videos have gone down a lot. And while numbers certainly are not everything in creating content, they are feedback on the videos that your followers, that your subscribers want to see. 
So many of you support all of us. I appreciate that. Y'all are awesome. I know there are a lot of cool content creators out there and the fact that so many of you are so supportive of so many of us is just astounding because I don't have time to watch everyone's video and none of us expect y'all to have that time either. But because of this, I need to make a change to my channel so that I am using my time in the way that best serves you as a viewer. I had so much fun creating the skit between shopping for my costume pieces, writing out a script, filming and editing. I've spent two weeks putting together the two minutes of video that y'all watched at the beginning. That's not something that I usually have the time to do because I'm usually putting out multiple event guides every single month and that tends to take priority. So going forward, I will only be doing an event guide when I write the article for Wizards Unite Hub. When Matt writes the article for Wizards Unite Hub, I will not be doing an event guide video. That will free up my time so that I can do more creative videos like this and so that I can work on some of the video guides that are more research intensive. You know, I'm really proud of the video I did on grinding XP, grinding family XP, and the best SOA training skills for rural players. Those videos are helpful. They're different than what anyone else has put out. And those videos took a lot of time to research. So by cutting back on my event guides, that means I have time to do more in-depth research and videos backed by research. So thank you all for understanding that I'm just slightly changing the direction of my channel. Obviously I'm still overall a Harry Potter Wizards Unite content creator. I also, side note, kind of want to do some other Harry Potter content that's not just Wizards Unite. I don't know. And this, this will give me time to explore that. So, that's what's happening here on Witches Unite. Remember, I have merch. So, you can check out my Teespring shop in the description down below. My other designs include the Pink Tastic design and the Peace, Love, and Harry Potter design. Wizards Unite Hub, if you appreciate the written resource that reaches over 100,000 people every single month, has a Patreon. So the money on the Patreon goes to a lot of different places. Some of it goes towards me, but half of it goes towards website investment and expenses and things like that. So consider becoming a patron of Wizards Unite Hub. If you like this kind of content, if you want to see more skits, if you want to see more in-depth guides, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you don't mind notifications, ring that notification bell. But I hate notifications, so I am not offended if you don't do that. <laughs> all right, that's all that I have for y'all today. As always, thank y'all so much for watching. Until next time, au revoir, witches.